member of the steering. I'm a member of the steering committee of Baltimore Ventures United. We are convened here today for one very specific reason. We are calling on Sheriff John Anderson, Mayor Brandon Scott, and Administrative Judge Weinstein to halt all evictions. Though the reasons should be clear, we have several individuals with varying experiences and perspectives to speak directly to this needed measure. First, I welcome Matt Hill, Public Justice Center attorney and Brew Steering Committee member. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Tisha. Um, again, my name is Matt Hill. I'm an attorney at the Public Justice Center. I will be brief. Um, evictions are a public health crisis. Uh, 352 evictions were scheduled by the sheriff for this week. There will be hundreds scheduled in the weeks to come, and many of those tenants will be evicted. Meanwhile, our hospitals are filling up. The state has 2,746 COVID hospitalizations as of January the 2nd, much more than the previous high of around 1950 reached just last year. Baltimore City has suffered more with a positivity rate of 33%, compared to a statewide rate of 27%. At Public Justice Center, we represent tenants facing eviction, and we see how evictions uh, further the spread of COVID-19. If tenants are evicted, they are forced to live in close quarters, in shelters, doubled up with family or friends, or on the streets. You cannot quarantine or stay home if you have no home. The city has ample rental assistance available, and one eviction right now is one too many. This is a public health crisis and we are calling on the sheriff, the mayor and the court to suspend evictions and slow the spread just as they did in March of 2020. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you so much, Matt. Um, next we have a renter who definitely would like to speak to um, the reasons why we're here today and making this call. Keisha, thank you, Keisha. Good morning and thank you for having me. Hello everyone, I'm Keisha. My family consists of my two children, my sister and I. COVID has impacted our family in a very big way. At a point, my whole household had it and three of us have respiratory problems. My sister had to be hospitalized over a week and suffered lasting heart trouble because of COVID, causing her to take a lot of time off of work for doctor's appointments until she eventually lost her job for missing too much time. And as we all know, along with COVID came virtual learning in which my children did not do well. So I was left with a decision, work for my children. Well, I chose my children, which meant a big decrease in my work hours equal in a very bad situation for us. With me barely working and my sister not working at all, of course our bills suffered. Knowing, excuse me, excuse me y'all, I just had a little hiccup just talking about the situation just gets to me a little bit, sorry about that. But knowing that we can no longer afford the home that we were living in, we started to look for other places. That didn't pan out well for us. With the bill suffering, our credit scores went down, and as we all see, the prices of houses went up, making it extremely hard to find another place. A good note is we did get to a point of us working full time again and trying to play catch up. Then comes this eviction notice. I'm scared of what'll happen for my family if we get evicted and have to go into a shelter or live with others, especially with the COVID numbers on the rise again we could end up in the same situation or worse. How can a court not be in session because of COVID, but deem it okay to put families out of their houses and into shelters and other undesirable living situations? Do our lives mean less than theirs do? We just pleading and asking the courts to please rethink these decisions and stop the evictions. 
Thank you all for, for hearing me out on this. Keisha, thank you. Thank you so much for highlighting your story and your lived experience. Next, we have Detrice Dowridge, who is also a member of the Brew Steering Committee and um, is the president of Right to Housing Alliance. Thank you, Detrice. And good morning, all, and thank you all for being here. Um, so we are here today asking city leaders to do the right thing. This pandemic doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. We have single parents who are bread, who are the only breadwinners in the family, but what happens when they get sick and cannot work? What happens when children get sick and cannot attend school? It's time for city leaders to step up and provide remediation. Things aren't getting better with this pandemic and evictions aren't the answer. Please do the right thing and keep families in their home. Families like uh, Ms. Keisha needs your help. Thank you so much, Detrice. Really appreciate your perspective and um, the fact that you yourself are a renter and also um, really help other renters to navigate this system. Next, we have Albert Turner, who is an attorney. He will be reading a statement from Ms. Joanne Williams. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as Tisha said, my name is Albert Turner with the Public Justice Center. Uh, I am speaking on behalf of one of my clients, Ms. Joanne Williams, who asked me to intercede on her behalf today. She is called in, but she asked that I I speak on her behalf to ask Sheriff Anderson, Mayor Scott, and Administrative Judge, Judge Weinstein to halt all evictions during the rise of the COVID-19 infection crisis. Prior to, prior to COVID-19, Ms. Williams worked at a nursing home. But like many Baltimore City residents, she contracted COVID in May of 2020, and it made her so sick that she could not work any longer full time. Ms. Williams' COVID illness began, became so bad, in fact, that it left her with chronic vertigo and she was for, forced to stop working altogether in the fall of 2020. Obviously, with the lack of work, she fell behind on her rent payments and her landlord began to threaten her with eviction. Uh, bringing those failure to pay cases allowed her to enter a CDC declaration where fortunately those eviction cases were paused. However, her landlord used a loophole of the tenant holding over case and brought that against her where he found it, he got a judgment on, uh, on her in fall of 2021. It was around that time that Ms. Williams was able to apply with the mayor's office to get rental assistance to pay back the back rent where she was approved in the amount of $12,000, which was paid out to her landlord. Her landlord signed the rental assistance agreement and was given $12,000 of back rent for the amount of money, for the amount of time that she missed during the COVID. Now, the agreement clearly stated that the landlord had to dismiss all current evictions, including the tenant holding over judgment that he had gotten prior. However, the landlord did not do this. The landlord, in fact, went in December and got a warrant and then went and scheduled an eviction for her. Ms. Williams is currently scheduled to be evicted this Thursday. Uh, Public Justice Center has filed a motion with the court to stop the eviction. However, we haven't received an answer right now. Uh, we are hoping to get an answer from them very, very shortly. However, as things are currently situated, Ms. Williams is currently looking to be evicted this Thursday. Not only has COVID kept Ms. Williams from being able to keep the roof over her head, but her landlord has taken advantage of her in the city's rental program and put money in her in his pocket and put Ms in order to put Ms. Williams out in the street. Ms. Williams thinks that we cannot let this continue on and we need evictions to be halted right now so that things like this won't happen to Ms. Williams and others. Thank you. Albert, thank you so much for um, highlighting Ms. Williams' story. And um, unfortunately, there are many more stories that mirror her experience. Next, we have Dr. Gwen Du Bois, physician with 
Chesapeake Physicians for Social Responsibility. Thank you, Dr. Gwen. Hello, everyone. I would like to read the statement from Dr. Zachary Berger from Johns Hopkins School of Medicine and the Berman Institute of Bioethics. He's a physician at the Esperanza Center a Health Clinic and unable to be here today. A patient of mine, he says, has been looking for work for the past six months. His car was repossessed and he was briefly homeless. Finally, he found work, scraped together enough for an apartment with help from friends, and was ready to start. Then he began having shortness of breath and cough. He couldn't show up to his orientation for the new job. On Christmas, he was diagnosed with COVID. Then he wrote me, Doc, how long do I have to isolate? Why, I asked. They want to evict me on December 31st. This story is repeated over and over again. In response, our institutions and governments continue to fail. In 2020, there was a brief window when we were supporting people with COVID, when we recognized that a pandemic is not a punishment for bad behavior, but an opportunity to demonstrate common humanity. In 2021, that window slammed shut. Here we are, a new year. We can open it again. Epidemiologists and public health experts agree. Homelessness in a pandemic is deadly. Please help my patients and all of us by using government as an instrument to help, not a cudgel to beat with. Suspend evictions. Thanks, Dr. Berger. And I would add that women of color with children like Keisha are disproportionately victimized by the threat of evictions, increasing disparities in health. Even before COVID-19, low birth weight, premature births, and increased more infant mortality were all associated with eviction and eviction filings. Inadequate housing associated with chronic asthma is dangerous for children's development, especially for those under five. Young children exposed to overcrowding and or multiple moves in one year were more often reported to have poor health, food insecurity, impaired educational, social, or emotional skills. In older children, a history of multiple moves has been associated with mental health problems later in life, including violence and suicide. In adults, Eviction filings are associated with increased suicides as well, and evictions with increased use of emergency room and increased mortality. Those who were unsheltered in one study before COVID-19 had a 10 times higher mortality than the housed. And now homeless people who become sick with COVID are twice as likely to be hospitalized and two to four times as likely to die than the general population. Moratoria in evictions and utility shutoffs are effective in reducing COVID infections and deaths. A study out of Hopkins found that eviction bans reduce the infection rate of the virus and protected communities. We must see housing as health, preventing illness, hospitalization, and death. When our hospitals and healthcare personal personnel are stretched to the limit with the Omicron surge, we need an eviction halt now more than ever. Chesapeake Physician for Social Responsibility believes it is a public health imperative that evictions be prevented, suspend evictions, slow COVID, save lives. Thank you, Dr. Du Bois. Um, your perspective and that of your colleagues is very um, respected and appreciated. And um, I'd like to add, as Dr. Gregory Branch indicates um, housing is a vital sign. And when we don't honor that, and we don't honor the fact that most of the citizens in Baltimore City are renters, and we don't acknowledge that housing, again, is a vital sign, we're negating the importance of those individuals. And the lifeblood of the city. Um, at this point, we would love to invite any members of the press or um, individuals who are present at this time to use the, um, the raise hand option if you have any questions or if you'd like to make a comment. And Rachel, I'm not sure if you can see um, if anyone is raising their hand or has a question. Yeah, Tisha, I don't see anyone yet. And I'm looking. And if um, I'm missing it, please, um, if anyone else can see someone's hand raised, if I'm missing, please let me know. But I'm not seeing any hands yet. 
I think I'll formally stop the recording. Okay. Um, I, on behalf of Baltimore Renters United, I'd like to thank all who participated in this panel and um, everyone who attended this morning. And I really sincerely hope that the sheriff, um, the judge and Mayor Scott take this request seriously and act, act rapidly. Um, this virus is not waiting. People's health is not waiting. And we need to take willful, deliberate measures to help stabilize people and ensure that the one thing that we can control, which is housing, is um, put in place and kept stable. Thank you all for attending.